Okay, so the first step is I've lined her muzzle with peanut butter, which obviously, looking at her face, makes it much more enticing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I always, always, always want the dog moving towards their muzzle. So you're never putting the muzzle towards them, they're always coming to you. Because of that, whenever I start with a dog, I'm going to put their muzzle with the peanut butter inside in a bowl, put it on the ground. That way, wait, <laughs> they're moving towards the muzzle and they're doing it all themselves. It stops any human interaction, any accidental moving towards their faces, they're driving towards it and it's something comfortable for them because they're used to eating out of a bowl anyway. Just gets them used to having the muzzle around their face and starts the process really, really easily. Once you have a dog that's really happily moving towards this, this took about two weeks for Kira. She didn't like things around her face. So it took about two weeks for her to comfortably move towards the muzzle and happily keep her face in there while she was eating. But once she got to this stage, I, all I did, can I have this back please? <laughs> all I did was remove the bowl, back. And that way I was the one holding it while she licked it. So that got her used to having my hands around her face with the muzzle, which again will take time, especially for a dog who is a little bit face shy. Once they're moving towards the muzzle happily, again, you always take it away from them when you're finished, so they're always moving towards it. You can start messing with the straps, pulling them around. Obviously, you're gonna have to buckle it on their head at some point, so it's best that get used to you. Come here, come on. Pulling the straps around their head, so when you do finally buckle it, it's not a big deal. Kira really likes her muscles, so it's difficult to get her away from it. But this is obviously the end result you want. You want your dog to see this and go, oh, good stuff's about to happen. Okay, back up. As they get more used to you holding it, you can start lifting it up. So you can start holding it at head height instead of on the ground. Which, again, this is how they'll be when you put it on them. So rather than having it on the ground like a bull, you can get used to them holding it up, and that way you can buckle it around their head. At this point, I've still not buckled the buckle on her, so she's used to me messing with the straps, but every time, if she did pull back, I could release it straight away. She's never going to feel trapped in her muzzle. Kira, back up. <laughs> Once you've got a dog that's really driving for their muzzle and really happy to approach you and come up to you, I would start playing, I call it the chasing game. Hey, okay. is one of her favorites. You really want them to be wait. You really want them to be constantly moving towards this muzzle. They never back away from it. You only want them to know movement towards it. You're the one that takes it away. It just stops the problem of them getting used to or getting rewarded for pulling their head back, which can sometimes happen if you're a little late with markers or if you're building duration and you're going too quickly. If they get in the habit of pulling their head back, they're never going to be comfortable wearing it because they're going to think they can pull their head back and be done with it. Okay? So muzzle chasing, you literally just hold it at head height, walk backwards, and once they stick their head in, you stop so they get a little snack, take it away again, walk backwards. Okay? And if you have a dog that's doing this, then you've, you've done well because they really want their muzzle. If they're not that keen, just go back a step. Go back to being on the ground. You can even do one step at a time. When we first started, I literally put it down, take one step back. So all she had to do was take one step forward and she got that reward. One step back and she got that reward. And then slowly over time, I added more and more distance. So she really had to drive towards the muzzle, which made it a good target for her. You've eaten all that peanut butter. Wait. You will obviously need to get them used to it being clicked on at some point. Some dogs are more noise sensitive, especially if you have a dog that has some anxiety issues or is reactive, noise sensitivity can, tends to come with that. Um, so it's good to get them used to the sound separately. You didn't like it when we started, did you, Kira? What I would do is I'd literally get the muzzle out, have treats in one hand, buckle in the other, click it, food appears. So click means good things, just like everything else. You can even, with this one, it's nice. This is a custom biothane one which is not not the cheapest thing in the world um, but it is nice because it's more flexible so I can get her to put her face in and I can buckle it not around her head. So 
so she can get used to the buckle without being trapped in it. Hey, Bubs. The trickiest bit is once the peanut butter is gone. <laughs> so once you've gotten them used to putting it on, you've trained the buckle, you can buckle them into it. I did this for a while where I would just hold it and I'd take it off her before she finished. So she never felt she needed to pull back. But once they finish the peanut butter, obviously they could be wearing it 10 minutes to an hour if you're taking them for a walk. It's really good to practice feeding through it. So she's very comfortable wearing her muzzle anyway, but I can feed her through the sides. And we would literally sit on the couch at home. She'd sit on my lap with the muzzle. So it's not an exciting atmosphere. It's all about relaxing, being very, very calm. And every 10 seconds or so, five seconds, she gets a little snack. I just use her kibble, it's nothing exciting. <laughs> but that way she gets used to having it on and she still gets that sort of reinforcement that it is a good thing. Kira. You can also use, um, I've used cheese sticks, you know, like they put in kids' lunches because you can put them through pretty easily. Um, baby food tubes, peanut butter on a spoon, anything you can fit through. Her gaps are quite close together because her muzzle is mostly to stop her eating things. Um, but some like Baskervilles have really big gaps at the front. It's really easy to feed through. Right. Over time, you'll see, especially if you're on the couch at home, so it will sit on the couch at home. Here it's up. Down. No, I know there's peanut butter in there. Wait. Here it down. Down. Good girl. So over time at home, you'll actually see them start just falling asleep. It gets a bit boring. It just becomes part of their life, like wearing a collar. You put it on and they know, oh, this doesn't mean anything exciting is happening. Uh, and she is very, very food driven. Um, so it takes a while for her to relax, but even she'll just put her head down, take a nap. I did it while watching movies. I put on a movie and at the start she'd get something maybe every 30 seconds and then I'd space it out to a minute, a minute and a half, two minutes, etc. Um, so by the end she was literally falling asleep and it was nothing special. She was comfortable with her muzzle the same way she is with her collar. Uh, some of the reasons that you might muzzle train your dog, uh, a lot of people think of them as scary. They think it means people are going to avoid your dog, people are going to think your dog's aggressive. There is still that stereotype, obviously because people with reactive dogs do muzzle them for safety reasons. Um, but really I think every dog should be comfortable to some extent wearing a muzzle. She wears it at the vet, she's petrified of the vet. Um, the muzzle actually because she's so comfortable with it, she relaxes, it gives her something to do, she knows what to do, she sticks her head in the muzzle, she gets food. She knows that game, it's comfort to her, so she relaxes with it at the vet. Um, when she's had injuries, instead of doing a cone of shame, which she hates, <laughs> I can pop her muzzle on and she can't lick, she can't bite her stitches, um, so it's been really good for that. What else can you wear muzzles for? Oh. Well, just emergencies even, you never know when there'll be a natural disaster, uh, you might have to suddenly put dogs that don't know each other very well in a small space. If your dogs are muzzle trained, it just takes out that worry that there might, if there is an argument, that anyone's going to get hurt. It's just extra protection. Or if your dog is injured, uh, even the best mannered, softest, sweetest dog, when they're injured can bite. They are dogs. It's how they communicate. If they're muzzle trained, you can pop their muzzle on them. It's not going to cause them any undue stress. and. They're not going to be able to hurt anyone so you can treat them the way you need to.